What's up YouTube? My name is Kevin Reese. Thank you all for stopping by my channel again today, tonight. We're doing some remodeling in my house. I've had some people, you know, hit me up, social media, um, other outlets where I connect with people and, you know, kind of, you haven't done any videos lately. When are you going to do some videos? What you been up to? Well, y'all know that I'm, I mean, I'm full-time, uh, nursing is my thing, ICU nurse. So full-time with that, um, a lot of my time has been spent lately uh, in my house uh, renovating and um, tonight I want to take y'all along and just kind of show y'all the process and some tips that I learned from working with a general contractor. So before I went to nursing school, you know, I worked for a general contractor, great friends with him. I learned a lot working with this guy. So this video is not aimed at probably, I wouldn't say this video is like aimed at professionals for helping them. It's more so just a vlog, just like a, an evening in my life here of what I'm doing with the house. But tips that a lot of people, beginners, can see that it's not as hard as you think it would be. So if you wanna save a ton of money and do it yourself, pay attention to the tips in this video. So let's go ahead and get into it. I got some of my paint in here in front of the heater just because it's like 40 degrees tonight and it's cool inside the house. This is some of the trim paint we're going to be using here. Some interior and exterior high gloss, so durable glass-like enamel finish. That's what's going to give us our nice sheen. I got some of this leftover semi-gloss, so I'm going to put it all to use though. But these cans are getting warm now. I say we're good to go. And this is what your house looks like when you renovating construction zone because it pretty much is so there's stuff everywhere yep this is it <laughs> All right, lights on so I got the heater up here going this helps keep the temperature everything nice up here so keeping everything good and warm so this is going to make sure that our our surface is decent because like i said it's cold outside but what we got going on right now I'll take y'all here in this bathroom this front bathroom so everything is primed it's a little shy here did some drywall work here on these corners took a lot of work a lot of time but looking a lot better. So walls are primed. I've just done one coat of primer. These had wallpaper on them. I pulled them off, cleaned that, used some fabric softener. That's a, a good trick to get them off. But i um, already done that. I've done some mudding in here and some sanding with some 120 grit. And so it's fairly smooth. It's all pretty, in pretty good shape. And a uh, big thing like my boss told me you know, when I used to work for the contractor, he said, you know, make sure the big thing, he said, make sure it's sanded good where people can feel. So walk along the walls, we'd walk along the hallway, walk along like this, feeling up and down. So, I mean, you're gonna sand where people are gonna walk up and say, oh yeah, that's really nice. So they can feel it and say, hey, that's a really nice job. But done a bunch of mud in here. This was a spot right here. You can't even really tell now which is what we want, but me and my buddy had to move a couch out of this bedroom. I just finished this bedroom up in there. So I uh, moved the couch out and I uh, banged it here into the wall and I put, put some nice holes there, but those have been patched up with some mud. So what we're gonna do tonight is, I also had to do some popcorn sealant repair and uh, that popcorn sealant repair, I use some of this stuff right here, this Homax sealant texture, easy patch. So. It's kind of not as messy as doing it by hand, which I've done that before. But uh, it got the job done, so we got it patched up. I put a new light right here, and as far as that vent goes, it was in bad shape. So I went ahead and hit it with some spray primer. Some spray primer, which this is that Bear. This is the Home Depot brand. It's just what I could find because I'm telling you right now, for whatever reason, trying to find kills primer is like near impossible. Same thing with that popcorn ceiling repair. Every place was sold out of it. So, but that stuff really works when you're hitting 
uh, places you can't really get with a brush. So like that vent was a great spot, great example of using that. Uh, also, uh, a cheap way to do it, and um, you would, wouldn't really even know, but some of these switches that were worn, I hit those with some of that primer, and I've got some paint that I'm gonna spray them with also, just like some, some gloss, uh, high, high gloss paint. Same thing with uh, this outlet cover was, it's old, and it looked like it was in really bad shape, uh, cause this bathroom was smoked in previously and so it was just yellowed so uh, cleaned it and then you wouldn't even be able to tell if you didn't know so when you put a white outlet cover over that and uh, two um, white covers over here that stuff's gonna look brand new y'all this door here is primed up and ready to go so I've done two coats of primer on the door and uh, you know trim in here the door casing, all these have had two coats of primer put on them. And uh, like I said, the ceiling's been repaired. So on that popcorn, you can kind of see where it was, but I, you have to keep in mind when you're doing this stuff, um, when you're looking at it, going over it with a fine tooth comb like this, you're gonna look at stuff that people are not normally going to see. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, also, you're not gonna be in here inspecting it like I am right now with these two huge LED lights, it's not going to look like this normally. So a good rule of thumb is if you can get it to where it looks absolutely jam up and looks great under this lighting, um, normally, I mean, a hall light, you might have the bathroom lights on or light on here in this den or bedroom. It's, it's not going to be, the defects are not going to be that noticeable. So that's a big thing to keep in mind. All right, so I'm gonna take y'all through this process real quick. We're gonna hit this trim in here with some of that trim paint that I showed y'all and what that is gonna do. Right now you can see it's primed. So it's just primed with the, uh, and I used Kills 2. to show y'all what I'm talking about. So I use this Kills 2 primer and which is great. It's what I could find at the time. Going over the walls in that bedroom, I needed some heavy hide formula. So that's why I went with the Kills 3. And from my experience, the Kills 3 is your premium primer, and I and I use all latex stuff just because it's so easy to use and the cleanup is so much easier than oil-based. So this high hide sealer and stain blocker works great. So as you can see, like some spots in here on this ceiling in this den, which I'll show y'all. This will be in a future video. Right now I have everything in here just kind of stored. But uh, you know, you're gonna want ventilation, so when I start painting or doing any drywall, that window, a window goes up in whatever room I'm in and that fan goes on. Shop vac, kind of an older shop vac that uh, I pieced together. And got, I got this piece off of eBay, um, the piping off of eBay and just kind of made it work. But it works and I picked up a new filter off of eBay also. You're gonna want an extension cord you're gonna want some outlets, a nice cordless drill here with a mixer, and I use this mixer for, I use it for dry, I use it for mixing drywall mud, paint, primer. It's kind of an all-in-one mixer. And I think I, I picked this thing up at Ace Hardware and it was fairly cheap, like less than 10 bucks. All right, so anytime I get to working, you're gonna want a bucket with some water. Anytime you're doing any drywall, painting, anything like that, a bucket with some water is going to come in handy with keeping the material you're using, whether it be paint or drywall mud, from hardening on your tools and making it difficult to clean up. So I always keep a bucket with some water in it. If y'all can see the steam coming off of it, I always like to put some warm water in it. But just about half a bucket full like this is good. All right, so we're gonna get started with the process here. As our super coat, we're gonna use this because I only have a little bit in here. Pop this bad boy together. Go ahead and give that a mix.
give that a quick spin. Hey, do both directions. Try to save as much paint as I can. And y'all remember that bucket I told you about? Drop it in. And I'll leave that in there like that. And if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you pick one up because they make these little platforms, especially if you can catch them Black Friday sales, like I got this one and I got another one, both Black Friday deals. They make any kind of paint drywall work you have to do super easy. The reason I do it like this is because I get everything primed, all the trim, ceiling, everything is painted and prime. All right, so it's ready for whatever you wanna put on it. I start and I just use that brush because I'm not worried about getting any of that extra trim paint on the wall in the corners right there because I'm gonna be painting over that. So there's, there's a, that's a process and there's steps you go through. Start here in the corner and you can kind of see you'll have a little bit more white right there in that corner. It just looks a little shiny. This, this does not take long. Once you get nice in two coats, once you get two nice coats of primer up here, this is a pretty quick process, y'all. So like that and I'll go out a little bit kind of work my way back it's not going to take long at all but the reason for doing this is to get the the pop that comes with it so see you may be able to look here and see a little different So kind of back and forth like that. And you can see I'm already ready to move. My platform. Does not take long at all. And you can kind of see, it's hard to see Probably even harder to see on camera. That's one of the reasons you use big lights like that because it helps show, you can see the shimmer of the wet paint. So you can see it glistening and that's kind of how you know what you, especially when you're dealing with uh, uh, everything white like this, you kind of, you know, you can't really tell what you're looking at. So here. Maybe with the light better, you can kind of see there. But this is what's gonna give, this is what's going to give the trim that nice pop. So just turn to avoid drips. Like I said, it does not take, once this, You'll find with primer and it just kind of soaks up the paint. And when you get to these corners with the shadows, it gets a little more difficult to see. Especially back here. Make sure we get all the corners. Like I said, it's not a big deal if you get some on the wall. Not a big deal at all because we're gonna be painting there and cutting in anyway. So just like that, 
And we've almost weighed our way all around this little hallway. So once you get it just like that, that's it. So you can see in that shimmer, when you get the gloss like this, that is what's gonna give you that pop. So you can see, that's hard to see because it's not dried yet, but so like this trim here around this door case and you can see that if you can tell the difference, and it's primed, it looks super white, super nice, right? And you look at that up there, you can already tell a difference between this and between that trim up there. Subtle things, little changes, but they make a big difference. So when that dries, this is gonna look great. Same thing with this door casing and the trim. So you just go up and down like that. Around the I wanna show you all around the bottom here. You can notice that I didn't really paint a lot. That's because I'm going with hardwood floors in here. There was previously, there was carpet, which was a popular thing back in the 90s, early 90s when this remodel was done at that time. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna be cutting this door casing up probably, depending on the thickness of the flooring that I'm putting down, I'm gonna be cutting that door casing all the way around here anyway, so I'm not really concerned with that at the bottom. All right. Nice coat on the door case in here. You see you got a little shimmer right there from the light. All right, so now what we're gonna do, same thing. I'm gonna hit this door case in here. We gotta use a pretty good bit. I'll probably end up using the rest of this can once we get here to the door. So we're gonna hit the door. I wanted to mention I did install a new uh, fan and light up here also. I had to go up in the attic, that was fun. So a little pro tip for y'all, when moving in and out of rooms that you have just painted the door case in, be extra careful y'all. I'm telling you, watch this. Extra, extra careful moving in and out of these rooms. So you might think it looks funny, all this is wet paint around me and it's a narrow doorway. And I can't tell you how many times, see? Even like that, almost touching. Very careful and not to bump anything with your tools. So just be really careful. As y'all can see we've already got a nice coat on here, the entire door casing, top to bottom, back side, bump the top of the door there, you can see that. So here, this is an example that you can use. So because that stuff happens. This stuff happens all the time, y'all. You might do something and just, just bump the top of a corner and not mean to. So, quick, easy fix for that. All you got to do, just take your brush. We're gonna be painting that anyway, but to keep the run marks off, run across like that. So that's gonna keep your run marks off the door. And that's it. So all the trim is done in here. All the way around, looking good. Now, hard to tell, hard to see. So this is the door, this is prime only. And if I put it a little closer, you can kind of see a difference here between the trim that I've already painted with the trim paint versus the door, it's in that corner there. Got the whole front of this door done. 
first, I've just done one coat. I may just do one coat on it because I've got so many coats of primer, but you can see it's already got a nice sheen. It's already a little wider. And I want to tell you also, some people want to roll these with like foam rollers and uh, they say that's the only way you can do it. I'm here to tell you, you can definitely do that as you can see with just a brush. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful with on these doors is the edges like around here. After you go over it and you work your way down, once you get down to here, come back up and check because usually you'll have some spots that may start to run in these corners as that paint kind of starts to make its way. Like when it's in those cracks, you may have some runs just around anything you have angles like that you want to keep an eye on. Like I said, again, be very careful going in and out of these areas and just be mindful that the paint, because I promise you, you will do it. I have done it, but on like my back and stuff, you can see I had a spot on my leg somewhere right here. I brushed into the wall and just completely didn't even think about it, brushed by it and um, same thing. So just be mindful of that. So the door's done, but I want y'all to look right here. You can see you've got some runs right there and you've got a run right here and right here. You got some at the top here. So with your brush, kind of go over everything. But just areas like that, be mindful of. Like I said, you'll have to go back over that. As you, That's why I usually go from the top down and then I'll work my way back up. Any little areas like that that need a little touch up, a little TLC. So just keep an eye on everything because inevitably you will have some runs. And it's part of the process. Now, don't forget about right here. So the inside of the door, you can see what that looks like. If we were to leave that, it looks like crap. Attention to detail is big in my book and what's in my boss's book. So we're gonna go ahead and touch this corner up. All right, so now it's cleanup time. Show y'all. Another reason, this is why we do our, our water bucket here. And I'll drop that in there because this will be going outside to be cleaned. So, but that stays like that. Kind of reposition the lights. And I turned that heater off just because it was kind of warm back here for me, but like I said, just because of the temperature, uh, we'll turn that back on just to keep everything because generally paint, you don't want it really cold. There's, there's, a, there's a range that you want the paint to be in. As a matter of fact, most, most cans will probably tell you so coverage use, priming, surface prep application so right it, it'll tell you right here uh, apply full coat apply only when surface air temperatures are above 50 degrees so you want it above 50 like i said y'all it's cold it's been like down in the 40s so it's uh 40 it's below 50 for sure outside tonight so i keep the heater up here just to keep things warm I don't want to mess it that so a little tool like this just a little little wood chisel good for prying this off and uh like i said wood chisel now i'm not talking hammer that back in make sure we protect that paint keep it sealed i don't do fine wood woodworking with this chisel so y'all don't freak out that i'm i use it for stuff like this this is mainly chiseling something out mainly demo type stuff. <laughs> Grim paint is gonna be right here. Now, we are done with trim up here for right now. So 
you can see this is starting to dry some. It's got a nice, a nice sheen to it. And the good thing about that trim paint with that acrylic is that it's gonna be easy. Uh, if you scuff that or bump it or you get dirt or something on, you can wipe it off and it'll just come off very easily. So that's one of the pros to that. So everything's good. All right, so I usually, when I'm done with the, when I'm done with my mixer, I just kind of spin it off like that and let it dry. I pull, I usually pull the battery out of all my stuff. So we'll set this right up here. All right, so as far as the cleanup, Trying to navigate through this house. Ugh. All right. Like I said, it's cold out here. Okay, I'm gonna take my get some music going. I always listen to some music when I do that. But I'm gonna take them out because I don't like being out here at night and not able to hear anything. So it's not below freezing, so that's good news. Anytime it gets below freezing, I typically don't do any painting because I can't do any sort of cleanup because my hose will freeze. And you see, this is a new hose because my other one froze and broke. So I just dump that out now. This is my yard, my house. This is just over here by a wood pile. So I don't really care that I'm getting a little paint right over here. It doesn't bother me. Typically on a job site, if I was doing someone's house, I would, using their hose and their water, I would stretch it all the way out to the edge of the yard. So like it would be way out by the woods. Just attention to detail, small things. Big thing with your brushes, just clean all the paint out of them. So just keep everything nice and clean. Just take care of your stuff, guys. Take care of your tools, they'll take care of you. The old saying. Sometimes I'll take, if you hold this up against something and put some pressure on it, makes it real easy to clean. Y'all can see it's still got some paint in there. But I'll do that and fan, kind of fan the bristles out. You can see that's a lot better than it was. But you know, this stuff isn't cheap and money doesn't grow on trees, so I try to just take care of my stuff the best I can. All right, so once we're back inside with the stuff, I usually, I don't leave that in there. I'll set it out on top of something, let it dry. So edge of a paint can like that, that way it'll dry. I don't ever leave it. Don't ever leave your brushes in water. I'm Kevin Reese. Thank y'all for watching this video. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe.